Hi guys, Prehistoric Painting here. Coming from the depths of Florida to show you guys a new how-to video on basing your miniatures. And we will also be using water effects today. Um, not like big rivers or anything like I have in one of my uh, Carnosaur models, but just simple puddles of maybe dirt, maybe puddles of dirty waters. If you want to do sludge, slime, swamp. Uh, basically anything you can little imagine. Um, and I, I did a little prep work in one of my other uh, videos on the resin one of these croc cigars. So, you know, the problem with the resin is the video. I'll link it up there, or try to at least, because that's new to me. But so I made these little green stuff ponds, um, based by doing like little ropes of green stuff, doing a little circle around to make like, a, and then used a sculpting tool to make a lip. Now, when I first started doing this stuff with the green stuff, and I had old school green stuff that was like from 2010, so it was, did not mix well together, but I still was using a toothpick instead of sculpting tubes. I've just gotten more fancy since trying to engage a little bit more. So this one, I have a bit bigger and deeper set of a, of a lip on this one. So I pre-did that. So this is basically just a green stuff crater I made. Did a, like a little, made a little snake, looped it around, push it down so that way it seals at the bottom, let it harden for a day, and then primed over it, painted it, and now we're actually going to base these guys. Now they are not completely done, I still have a little bit more work on them to do, but I wanted to get the basing part because it's. I'm starting to, I want to see how they look with the, with the rest of the base, because sometimes the model's not complete until you get the base done. Um, and this guy too, uh, I'll show you just how to do a basic basing as well. It's pretty easy. Uh, I used a few different things. So, the tools we'll be using. I actually have GW's texture tool. Um, I used to just do use a, a, a brush. If you get like a stiffened brush, it works out just fine. Uh, we also be using that's a regular. Take a paint brush you don't really care about anymore, because that we'll, we'll be using for the uh, Vallejo acrylic water texture. So for our water texture, we will be using Vallejo acrylic brush texture, and this is like still water. Yeah, still water. There's some other ver ver versions that are pretty good. I know I have used um, this uh, Vallejo water texture transparent water. Uh, that's good for making things kind of pure as more if they're moving. It's more gel-like. Uh, and then for the actual basic material, we'll be using a Ghrelin Earth, Ghrelin Badlands, both texture paints from Citadel. But um, you cannot, there's a thing you can do is you basically just get dirt from your backyard, PVC, PVA glue or just Elmer's glue with a little bit of water and before you would prime them put it on the base and then use that primer kind of seal in so you have to paint the dirt a little bit more but it worked I a lot of my models it works out pretty well Agrax earth shade to uh, shade over the texture and we actually use some contrast paints Agros, Agros dunes and plague bear flesh to texture or not sorry but color the water after Everything dries. We will also be doing a Zandri dust. I'm sorry, Talaran sand dry brush and a screaming skull dry brush to give that dirt or the earth a little bit of texture. So first, we're going to start with that basing material. All right, so we have just the one model with the skull in it out. I'm going to take my Agrilan Bylands here, shake it up a little bit because it's. Oh, this one's empty. Oops. <laughs> Let me uh, find my other agro bad land real quick. There we go. <laughs> so there we go. Always try to keep stuff that you use uh, close by on hand. So shake it up just a little bit just to get that, that dirt stuff up to the top. And if you can't do that, just scoop it out with that texture tool. So we're going to scoop it. And actually going to put a little bit in the middle here. Now you're thinking, well, why did you make that lip if you're just going to fill it in? Well, we're going to try to smush this down as best as we can. Because the thing is, if you put the resin water on top of a flat surface, it doesn't it doesn't look good. It looks like you put put gel on top of a on top of a model. So we're going to scoop some out, and then we're going to put some on the little lip. So you see, it covers it up. Fill it, it, it the weirdness of the of the green stuff lip kind of goes away once you do this texture stuff. It 
basically just becomes a natural formation. Because it look like when you first look at it, it does look weird. So you see, I'm just using the different sides of the tool to push things around, flatten it out, and I'm scooping a lot out. But we're giving it a little bit of texture in the middle, so that way it looks like a naturally formed bottom of this little pond of stale desert water. All right, so you see. That's basically how you work with that Grelin's Badland, a Grelin's Badland, the more grainy texture. So I'm going to finish off that part and I'll jump to a Grelin Earth. Alright, so now that we have mostly Grelin's Badland on the model where I want it, um, I'm going to clean off my tool, just take a paper towel, let's clean off that tool. And I want to point out something. So his feet got a little dirty in the process. And, and you, you can be careful. There's nothing wrong with being careful when doing these basing materials. But just think about a uh, soldier trudging through the mud and the dirt. is going to get feet dirty. I, you know, clean, pristine feet only happens like in a vacuum. So I'm just fixing that a little bit because I saw a little more white show than I wanted to. So don't be afraid to let the texture paint paint in a way part of your model of like the the texture it's the the, the terrain they're marched through all right so now we're gonna do a grill and earth you want to really shake this one because you want it you want it thick clumps so pop it open like that mine kind of tends to fall out so I'm just gonna basically scoop a good old blob big old blob and just put it down as thick as I can and then scoop and big old blob I think that should be good. Now one of the reasons why I like to mix both a Grillin's Badland and Earth is because in most terrain features it's not always just one like significant feature. Yeah, It does happen. Like in Star Wars. Star Wars is a big thing. You know, There are lots of just water, just sand, just desert, just marsh planets. And that's fine. You can have one terrain texture but it's still even then, like, it's dunes and then rocky dunes, and you can make different things that stick out. For this grill on Earth, you don't have to push it around too much. You want it to stay pretty thick, because this stuff is going to crack as it dries. And the thicker it is, the bigger the cracks will be. So some areas you, want, you might want thinner, spread it out more. But other areas, you want thick, so you have these nice, cool, like, dune sand cracks. So we're going to let that dry, and then we're going to come back to it, and then we're going to get to the really cool stuff after we wash it. As in, using the paint wash. Alright, now that the base is done drying, we can take a look at it. So if you look at the Grelin's Badline, it actually does a little bit of cracks itself, which is kind of nice when you clump it up. But the Grelin's Earth has all those tiny little cracks. It makes for very cool textures. I think it showed up better on these ones over here. Uh, and the more like bigger glops you have of that agrillin earth, it will make bigger cracks. So I didn't apparently I didn't glop it up good enough. But another alternate product I would recommend for big glops is this green stuff, crackling crackle paint, Mojave Mud Crack. And uh, there's a Martian Earth version as well. It's just red, but they're very good for making those big cracks because you just kind of like squeeze out the uh, medium onto the base. All right, so now we're going to wash with Agrax or uh, yeah, Agrax Earth Shade. So, they have a little it fills in that white spot where that where it started to crack. So, let's fill it in. And um, so I'm going to talk about real quick is um, a little trick that I learned kind of uh, from watching some other people's videos and talking to some people is that uh, I want to say if you're in a brush, never, I always want to say take, take uh, miniature painting slow and you will tend to have more fun. If you put a deadline on yourself, it can take the joy and kind of zenness out of it, not to be sound too pretentious, I guess, but like 
this is what I do to relax for the most part. But in terms of this video, I kind of wanted this basing stuff to dry quick. So actually, and you can do this for washes and paints as well, is I have an old hair dryer. I sit on low heat, low blow, <laughs> I guess you could say, and just point. Ooh, and there goes my Argus Urshade. Goodness gracious. That's one of the reasons why I hate, or not hate, but dislike GW stuff is it tends to spill a lot. I've lost many a contract. Oh no! Did I? Oh, well, he's a little bit more shade on that gold part then. I think I'm kind of good actually. So yeah, that, that's, you know what? I might as well use it. <laughs> now we're actually going to shade our little ponds. This makes sure that no the white is showing from the base. So we have a nice earthy looking bottom of a pool. Because like I said, if you just make a lip and then and then just fill it in, it's gonna look very artificial. Now with the dirt and the cracks and the skull, hopefully I'm going for I like to I like to add stuff into my ponds just to make it look more dynamic, like, you know. Uh, I haven't tried, like, grass or anything yet, but, like, I've seen people do swamp grass kind of stuff. Which we will do some uh, brushes, or, like, bushes and things like that. Alright, so I'm going to finish this up, and I'll come back after that wash is dry. And we're going to put some dry brush and then some resin paint or acrylic water texture. All right, so now that that wash is dry, we're going to do a quick dry brush of Talarin sand and, and then Screaming Skull. So get my paper towel, I got my dry brush. As always, just put a little bit on there. Do a little circles. Do, 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 do. And swipe off. I'll show this whole part because this part shouldn't take too long. We want to get to the good stuff of water texture. do a little at the bottom but we don't want anything too bright in the uh, the pond area it's the kind of thing that's underwater so light's gonna reflect in that refract in there and it won't look that bright Guy is kind of done. Move on to the next circles and then wipe off. I generally do like a lot of um, talking to myself. <laughs> Sounds bad. But like when I paint or like I do things that like I have steps in my head, I'll say them out loud because that keeps me on track. Like, okay. So with my dry brush, I will rub it in the circles and then wipe it off a little bit. So I was kind of already doing like the YouTube talking to myself before I was doing YouTube because it helped me as a painter rem remember things that you know could easily be forgotten, steps that people take for granted. And this channel is not about being the best; it's about being just okay and good. Yeah, it's about being good. I'll say that. And learning how to do things without having to be like hyper focused on is this really good? Because ah, there are great painters out there that have great advice, um, that have very technical advice, and I watch them. I, I do watch them all because I I want to become I want to become a very good painter. But I know that my techniques are generally very are much more simple. So I figured that would be a good use to the community. 
because you have all these great painters like painting and like they go through a process and all of a sudden like oh yeah it looks it looks like how I would have painted and then boom golden demon style painting after like two layers like how the heck did they get there you know they'll show you and it still won't make sense so I'll show you how the average guy tends to get those little steps how he how I cheat how I beg and barter with the models to just please 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 work with me this just once I want the eyes to be that big no not that big no and you redo the whole model no no I've I've actually never stripped or redone I've I've reprimed some models but generally those like really old models that I didn't realize I even had All right now I'm actually gonna switch to screaming skull without washing out my dry brush this kind of gives a little blend to it so again, the little circles, and then put a little bit on there, little circles. And this one we're going to do even less of, just lightly, even lighter than the Xandri, because it's brighter. <laughs> and this is why you have an apron. I'm going <laughs> to... Yes, I am wearing an apron. I bought a like $30 Hudson Durable Goods apron because I saw some people wearing them and like, hmm, maybe I'll use it. And this has been like one of the best investments. I'm, I'm going to do like a hobbies gear thing at one of these times. I know everyone does one, but I might as well do one too because everyone does one. Um, but like, uh, I will highly recommend an apron because this thing has saved me from so many like today I uh, like after I spilt the Agrax Earth shade here I spilled it on my uh, apron and instead of my shorts getting wet which my wife would have probably killed me or at least maimed me a little bit uh, I am now going to be okay because it was just spilled onto my apron and easily cleaned up all right so that dry brush is basically done now I will wash off my dry brush that way it's nice and clean and we're gonna get to the fun part all right and that fun part being learning how to do this water texture and you're gonna learn how I kind of did myself trial and error so first thing we're gonna do we're gonna take this big one because it's a lot easier to see and you know what we're gonna angle this camera so you can see a bit better Let's see if I get a little bit more of a angled approach. There we go. All right. So this is the pond we're going for. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mix up some plague bear flesh and agro stones. Mix them up. Shake, 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 shake. Get a brush that I don't really care about. This is a, some Reaper brush that I don't use anymore. And. Oops, sorry, I knocked it around. I dip my feather and I'll put some in there. You're like, why are you putting green in there? Well, the green adds kind of like this really neat little like, like if you just put if you just put the agros dunes, it doesn't look like this looks like weird water. It like blends in too well with the water. You know. All right. So now we got that. So mix those two guys. Like, did they little dip my brush in? So now I take the resin. It's in a little dropper bottle, and I literally just bulk, bulk, two, three, and I fill it up to that lip, and then I mix. Oh, I maybe did a little bit too much. So now I gotta be careful because I fill it up a little bit too much. I mix my brush in here, and you see that color. It looks really murky right now. And yeah, thinking that that's it's gross. Let me get better lighting for that water. And move it forward a little bit. Nope. Sorry guys, I didn't mean to don't like to mess with the lights while we're actually recording. It's generally a no no. Um, so just mix it in and you're going to get this very very muddy 
tannish water effect. And I'm actually, while I got this guy right here, I have a big old plop. I'm gonna transfer some over. We'll do a little drop right there. Another drop and another drop. We'll be a little bit more conservative with this one. Again, swirl it around. Next around. All right, and now you just wipe off this brush. And this brush has, I don't know if this is resin or what, but it makes the bristles pretty hard. So that's why I use a brush you don't care about because it's gonna be hard to repeat this process. And that's basically how I do it. A few drops, make some contrast paint in there. So you guys get the, let's see if I get you a closer up look. The. And so that's going to dry. It takes a while to dry. It takes a long time. So this video, uh, like I'm gonna have to come back to this much later. But just like that, it'll dry. And oftentimes it might shrink a little. So, and we'll get to that when it happens, but you just basically put more resin or more whatever this is. I, I, call, I keep calling it resin. It's diorama effects, I don't know. Um, don't eye and skin irritation. Be careful. Oh, good lord. <laughs> Be careful when I drop it on my models. Um, so now is a waiting game. We just wait for this to dry. I don't recommend using a uh, hairbrush or a hair dryer as I did with like the watches and the the um, ter texture paint because I think that makes it contract a lot more. The heat will make it shrink. So when we get back to these guys, those will be nice and dry. I'll even poke them so you show. You'll see how a dry that dried effect looks. All right, so our resin did dry. No, I'm going to poke it right there. So, if you take a look, it has this little concave feature. So, we're going to actually going to have to add more because, like I said, it dries and it shrinks a little bit and contracts. And it will start to, like, make this little, like, dip in the middle. And it did a little bit on this one, too. Where you see, like, next to this skull right here in the back area, you got a little spot. And it's really easy to fix. We're just going to add more of that resin to it. But before we do that, because you don't want to spill the resin... I'm going to finish these guys off for the most part by adding Army Painter Wasteland Tufts. And these little bits of grass will just add enough character that it really looks nice. And on top of the Wasteland, I also have um, some green stuff, grass tufts, and like the dead kind. I'm making my guys a very plain Z type environment. So this one's a bigger little piece, and it's real easy for these. Just look at the model where you want to stick it on and just push it down. A lot of these grass tufts come like with a adhesive glue. It's nice. You stick it in, push them on, like fluff them up as much as you want. So push it down and fluff it up. And whenever you like seal the, if you seal them, they'll, they'll stick in and they'll you know stay on a bit better. But generally, they don't stay on. They don't very rarely do they come off. I like to mix and match to make it look a much more dynamic terrain scape. So you just put it on and then push down and fluff it. Alright, see I'm still fluffing that one because these uh these green are the green stuff world oh well, he's not all oh, glued yeah, that's fine though. The green stuff world ones are a little bit bigger. And so, one thing I'll, I'll talk about is why I put them in the spots I did. I didn't want to obscure many big features. So I want to make sure those skulls are still visible. But, like, it, it does add that bit of character when it's in the back where the, you, you know, it's like if you're looking from behind, it still looks dynamic. And covering up the toes isn't that bad because the toes aren't that important. So, that model's almost complete. He's got to paint that rim. And trust me, it's going to make a lot better when they paint that rim. Alright, so for this guy... I always kind of like to add the tufts near the water 
because you know the, it's like if it's a dry area the only water source there would be grass and all that kind of stuff and so we're reaching for a harder to get area so I'm gonna grab my tweezers grab one of these pull it off because I want one right there in between the legs but by the water and then let's fluff it up with your tweezers so this makes it look like the grass is grown by the water. Got a little dead patch right there. And I think I'm going to put one of the green stuff ones. But these are... I think I grabbed like the really big ones. So let's see. It's got like this U-shape. Um, hmm. I'm going to put that on the edge of this one. This one ended up being a really big grass piece. This guy will do like a. I'm gonna do a tuck between the legs as well, isn't it? And then just push down. And then I'll get my tweezers and I'm gonna fluff up that grass. Same fluff up a lot. I don't know if that's the technical terminology. But see, I'm not like blocking any major features. You can still see the rock he's standing on, the skull and the water are still there. So the big thing when you're putting terrain is try not to draw too much attention away from the model. That's where I think a lot of people get, um, they'll, they'll put crazy great detail into, like, the terrain, and all of a sudden now you're you're no longer looking at the, tr the model, you're looking at the terrain. And that's what you were going for, then great, but you just spent a lot of time working on that model, and you want people to look at it. So don't, don't distract too much. It's blown away the extra little furs. All right. So, got that. Got the green tufts. And now we're just going to add that resin back. And real simple. Just drop, 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 drop. I'm adding a little bit extra because I know it's going to dry and constrict. So that way now that... If it does do a concave shrinkage again because of how it happened last time, there'll be an extra material. Oh, there we go. I think it's at its little resin limit. That'll be the water, whatever the water density. So as it dries, if it shrinks again, it'll just be a, it'll be a bigger layer on top, so that way it'll still look good. Uh, and the idea is, you know, this is a. Sl Painting is a slow process, not an entirely slow process, but it's a patient process. So with these waters, or these like mimicking waters, don't be rushing it. You will make a mistake, you'll spill stuff. Uh, my Carnosaur guy took a lot of like, I actually was working on the base while I was working on the model, and that proved to be difficult because I had that, I have a river go, I don't have him here in front of me unfortunately. But I, had, I made a river in a big old base, and I had no way to really stop the edges. Like, I had some, like, plastic pieces and all that, and they just didn't work out right. So I had to do a lot of resurfacing. And that is actually where the Vallejo water texture came into, came into play. I'll show that to you guys again. Because it made... I was able to put more of, like, a gel base on top of the water. And I didn't, I didn't have to rely so much on the pooling of it. So I use this resin kind of like at the base, and then as a layering effect, I use the water texture. And that's something we can look at here too, because we're going to let these dry, and then we'll come back to them. So, and then we're going to wait another night, because this took me one night, so now we're going to wait another night, and see how these come out. Alright guys, the moment of truth. How these water effects turn out. So we got our skull in the little pond. It's nice, it filled in the gaps finally. And we have our bigger pond. This one turned out real nice. I actually think when it dried, I kind of left that gap in and I refilled it. And it seems like a more natural layer. So you have like a dirty at the bottom and then a clearer at the top kind of look. And if I wanted to make it dirty again, I would just add it again, that contrast paint and spun it around. So and also I always recommend doing those little skulls 
or something. This makes it more dynamic to have something inside the water. So it's not just you have a puddle of water. It's, I have a puddle of water and it has something there like a rock or it's like a, a tree stump. Alright guys, so thank you for taking this journey with me and teaching you guys, or at least hopefully giving you tips more on how to do basing. We went over the texture paints, we went over the resin material, um, the uh, Vallejo acrylics that I use. Again, I don't know if it's resin, I just know it's Vallejo something. <laughs> it works like this. Uh, I've seen green stuff have a resin that's really good, it's more dynamic because you like flash it with your light and it works out much better. I also got to work on my Croc scars as I did this, so hey, I appreciate you guys staying with me. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, hopefully in these times, uh, it, it, it's quarantine right now for everybody. Uh, if you see this in the future, maybe not, but hey, I want to see if I can help anyone out in their boredom. You guys all have a great day. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you later.